three, two, Here one. We Here we are. Oh, it's live. We are on the Sisterhood of Avalon Facebook page. And uh, here we are with the Coracle. Um, and I forget the full name of our Bards, Books, and Chats. Ballads and Ballads. ballads. Thank you. Bards, Books, and Ballads. Yeah. And um, if you're catching us, hello. And we're. I see there are five, you know, five people here with us. That's awesome. And uh, more people are joining us. My name is Sydney Bell. And... Um, I'm a member of the Sisterhood of Avalon, and uh, I'm really delighted to be here this evening uh, on the Sisterhood of Avalon Facebook page. Hello to all those who are saying hello. Oh, and I'm really delighted to be sharing this next hour with Tiffany Lassick, uh, who is a dear sister, friend, author, uh, amazing, amazing woman. And she has agreed to graciously come and visit with us and chat about her writing and her book and her, her books, I should say, mm -hmm. plural. As, as of this week. As of this week. <laughs> so celebration, celebration. So let me just tell you a little bit about Tiffany. I've got her bio here. So I'll, I'll share a little bit with you. Um, Tiffany is a registered psychotherapist, spiritual director, and certified Havening Techniques practitioner. She specializes in spiritual psychotherapy with over two decades of experience in individual couples and group therapy. She's the owner of the Hive and Grove Center for Holistic Wellness in Kitchener, uh, which is just a beautiful place of healing that I'm always delighted to have the opportunity mm -hmm. to visit and has developed many things, um, self-development programs, which I think have led into some, some of your books. Um, Tiffany is an international presenter, keynote speaker and retreat facilitator, among many, many other things. So, hello. As well as a, an avid napper, I should avid say. napper. <laughs> It's all this list of things. Um, yes. <laughs> all, all your lists, all your accomplishments, so many, and such um, reflective of lots of hard work and passion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm seeing, I'm guessing, is what is reflecting and being reflected in the published works that are coming out from you. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting. I'm I, I'm finding if I'm looking like I'm I'm looking to the side, I'm just seeing all the faces and and recognizable. Um, yeah. <laughs> like I have time for a nap. Oh, believe me, I, I make the time for the nap. Um, <laughs> it's just so lovely to see those names come up mm -hmm. and know that those mm -hmm. those people are there on the other side of the screen. It is great to have you all with us. Welcome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's chat, Tiffany. Let's talk um, about uh, uh, about your creative process a little bit. Well, it's it's interesting. So, sort of jumping into, I guess the 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 one that is on the way, mm -hmm. um, and who knows when that is going to be. These always seem to be fairly long processes, but um, I, I sort of open it up by by calling myself like the accidental, and I feel like like the accidental or the reluctant, right? right. That um, <laughs> that um, it's it's interesting where how things kind of come upon you, and maybe this is something we would talk about it a lot in in the sisterhood of the um, you know the all one coming through, and I think sometimes I, I try to push it. Don't let the all one in. <laughs> I sometimes say like, I, I, yes, I'd love to have a nap or, you know, just uh, watch but a yet, movie. But yet it flows. Well, it does. And and I think, you know, we were chatting just, just before we, we went live about, I guess, sort of almost what, what the impetus is. And mm -hmm. and and I think it, there's a, a lot of, I see this in, in a lot of friends as well. Um it's like there's a, a passion for sharing something that has meant so much to me or with with the friends who I, I feel sort of 
or get caught up in the same thing as well. There's something inside that just it feels like it needs to be shared. And maybe that's part of the bardic as well, mm. right? That it, it needs to come through. And even though the, the human part of us might be saying, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's if it should be coming through me or or mm -hmm. if there's a different way that to to direct my my energies. You know, we were sort of talking about, you know, a process or a discipline. And I'm not sure in mm -hmm. truth sometimes if it's a process or a discipline mm -hmm. more as as much as it is something that just, it needs to come out. Like I I know with that. Well, <laughs> I actually talk about it in the introduction to the noble art that it literally came upon me the, the first book, you know, the great, the great work came out. I turned to my husband, to George, and I said, okay, never again. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> you know, when you make such a pronouncement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, there's, there's yeah. And yeah, I see some of the, the comments yes. in the side. People are relating and saying hello. It's really nice and to have you all here. Join the conversation. I had this okay. little, um, um, like little knock, knock, knock. As I said, I write about this in the introduction, just like this, like, hey, you're not done yet. And I'm like, I'm not listening. I'm not listening. <laughs> and then it just kind of gets louder. Right. Mm. And so, as I said in the introduction, like, I, I really feel like I, and I don't know that I had totally the context and the language as these things were coming out, but I really do feel like, uh, like the great work is Arian Rhodes book. And when I sort of see it, it's like the cycle of the seasons and, and, mm -hmm. and just, you know, the, the, the web and the patterns and, and being able to, to have an overview of that. Um, and <laughs> I'm sort of seeing things come up yes. and, um, <laughs> and that this one really felt like Cara Dwin's book. And she was like, this is happening. Oh, it's probably going to get a little loud here because I just heard someone come in the door and I'm sure that there's going to be very excited little puppy feet around. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Do you know, before we, you know, talk more about the great work and the, the noble art, do you, I, do you mind if I'm, I'm curious about um, your earlier writing writing or creating experiences? Like, had you written anything before? No. The, the great work was that was your first sort of I'm, I'm yeah. going to hey yeah that that was my first but but I had created a lot of of courses I'd written a lot of, okay. of curriculum so, right right yeah and so um so actually the great work when um started as a a 42 week course right right <laughs> and then i realized oh wait a second these are like chapters right mm -hmm. like it, it came mm -hmm. together that way so it's it's interesting i think when i when i look at sort of the arc and, and you know people know this uh, about me that I, I started in um getting a degree in film and right. um and and spent you know not really not very long working in the film in industry in canada mm -hmm. um, and realized that that is not where i want you know what's funny so i think i decided that i didn't want to work in the film industry because i didn't want to be working 24 7. right, so. <laughs> right. is this again the uh I'm reading Jen, Jenna's comment about do not name the the well from which you will not drink. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> Seems like that might be another <laughs> bit another of a theme, of perhaps. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. Um, but also, I recognize that you know it, it, it's a different thing. That that the reason why I didn't, you know, what I was doing when I was working in the film industry was I was doing like PA work and craft service work right. and. And I went into it, I realized, because I was interested in the stories. I was interested right. in people's stories. Right. right. And and that that is what film is about, the telling of the stories. But but the work to get there was not really what I had thought. Um, and, and so there was this very quick crossover into um, spiritual psychotherapy, which is like, mm -hmm. ah, this is actually getting to people's stories. Mm -hmm. to, to holding a space where they can actually step in and explore their own stories 
Right. Um, and, and, and thus learning more about themselves. And so it was out of that that I started to write curriculum, mm -hmm. um, which was very much on the esoteric bent. I mean, I think the first course I ever wrote was on the tarot, mm -hmm. you know, forever ago. Um, right. which again is a way of learning about yourselves and and that that kind of fed into what ended up becoming the great work so well, would you say there's like what would you say is that the the difference in in creating something like a curriculum versus um you know when you shifted into thinking no uh you know maybe this this actually is going to have a life as a as to, as a book, like is there a different approach, or what was it different for? I don't know how it felt for you. Yeah, I I I don't. I think the difference is that when I when I write curriculum, it's almost like bullet points. I remember saying when I was writing writing the noble art, I, a Facebook post where I'm mm -hmm. like. You know, happiness is seeing the bullet points become paragraphs. Right. Um, right. And, and so, you know, when teaching a, a course, I just saw my sister show up. Um, Aww. Hi, Tiffany's sister. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So when I'm writing a, a course, I've got, you know, these are the classes and this is the focus of the classes and this is what I want to touch on in the class. But right. But it, it really is that bullet point, because I know that once I get into teaching a class, things are, are going to flow and the I mean, the connections are there kind of inside. So gotcha. I don't write it all out. Because you but, become the conduit in the class. Right. But, OK, right. But it, you can't do that in a book. So you have to put yourself in more. Right. Does that make sense? Do you see yeah. what I'm doing with my hands? I, I do. In you know, I don't know if people know or how I'm showing up, but Sydney and I had this whole thing before we got on the my internet is doing something. So everything to me is like Mr. Roboto. <laughs> <laughs> Very disjointed. But it's I can hear you. Fine. On my end. So, oh, that's so I'm I sure thought. that other people. Um, now, can I throw another curveball at you? Sure. Like you were to articles right and shorter pieces for anthologies um, yes so is 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 there a different process there for you or a different experience yeah again it's it's almost like i think the the way of the conveying of 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 the information right of just just how much time and and i have to say that i find it harder to <laughs> this is another place where George would would laugh at me i um i remember going after the great work came out uh going to do a radio interview and i it had 15 minutes and it it was um the first time like going to a studio and i was going to be right. sitting across from a guy right um and 15 minutes i was like i was i was so scared um i'm like what what am i going to talk about for 50 minutes and george who was driving me there just looked at me like are you kidding me with that right now? <laughs> what are you going to talk <laughs> what are you about, going to talk about right. for 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. And I realized one that five. Afterwards, <laughs> like one five minutes, not five zero. One five minutes. Oh, very quick. One yeah. five. Yeah. And and it was that it it sometimes it can be easier to have the space of, of a book or a space of an hour because you've got the time to kind of flesh out what it is that you're trying to say. And and I actually find it harder to get like, the other writers in there like, don't take yeah. away my 10,000 words. So to bring it down <laughs> to something, that's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so you've, again, so you, you decided that you um, wanted to take your teaching, your curriculum and combine your, uh, your own voice into it in, in written form. And how many years ago then did this come up? So the great work, huh, uh, that came out in 2015. 2015. It's hard to believe that's, uh, that's six years ago already. But you know what's interesting? So that came out in 2015. And if I'm remembering correctly, I think I found my first notes on writing the introduction for what became the great work 
I found, you know, the, the computer timestamp mm -hmm. date stamp was 2003. Mm. Wow. So that's when I started working on it. It was published in 2015. Right. So, so well, that's that's a, a bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's steeped for a little while. Mm -hmm. Well, that, you know, anyway, <laughs> that actually gives me hope for a variety <laughs> of other things. Um, so you, you said before that the great work is Arian Rhodes' book and the, the Noble Art, which is your new book, which is just coming out. Do you oh, have something you can show us? Oh, can you see it? Because again, Mr. Roboto, there it I is. I can see it. Yes, it's lovely. I am so excited to get my hands on a copy tomorrow. I'm hoping. Yes. At your opening. So, um, so would you, you know, maybe go in, get, go into that a little more, because uh, you know, to give people an idea of what the great work is, and then what the noble art is. So, so the the great work is Arian Rhodes' book. Can you talked a little bit about cycles. Is there more you want to say about that? Yeah, I mean, the other way that I've, I've found has been sort of making sense to me in terms of what the difference between the books are is that that the great work is is like the 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 ar arrangement of ingredients that one has to work with. So mm -hmm. for those of you who have the, the great work, and we go through the eight um, spokes of the, the cycles of the wheel of the year, right. Um, right. the seasons. And so for each of those, That's it's lovely. like, oh, to, to understand the energy that. of this particular season, yeah, right. you can explore it through you know, this approach or this approach or this approach. And it, it actually, um, you know, there's there's a couple of ways which really allow you to approach it from more of a physical perspective or an emotional perspective or a more mm -hmm. constructive mental perspective or, you know, the intuitive guidance, the spiritual perspective. But they're they're like these little nuggets that that each of them can sort of are like a little doorway into the... Um, I just saw what Jenna said, um, a doorway yes. in, into what the, the core theme of that cycle is. Right. And, and in that as well, you know, again, those of you who have the book, I do have, and, and, and this was, this was a dedicated task I set for myself. I will tell you the, the personal reflections, the 365, questions and prompts the ones that i wrote yeah. for every single day yes um in order to give people a sense of of just how to start to access each of those slivers of the the wheel of the air so that's that to me is like again it, it's it's those those different threads mm -hmm. that are all you can sort of follow to get an understanding of the themes that are going on in the cycle of the year and of course you know the whole underlying i guess premise or philosophy is is that if if it's going on out there it's it's going on in here as well so i'm understanding the the themes and and the the symbols and the energies of the seasons and that helps me to understand and, and see what's going on inside of myself as well and and in truth, well, I think Arian Rod gave me about a month and a half to feel like, okay, done. I've I've put it out there. That's what I need to say before she's like, um, excuse me, there's more to say here. Which is I I think the other thing too is that if if there's a a bit of a theme to how what I feel strongly about, like what kind of motivates me in the work that I do. Yeah. It, yeah. it is the embodiment of things the not just talking about things, okay, but the embodiment of things. So, so, so I always think of embodiment in some ways as knowing it in, in my bones. Absolutely. Um, at some, okay. So really that integration piece that we talk about in the, the sisterhood of Avalon. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And so 
you know, for example, with the great work, mm -hmm. all of the personal reflection prompts, you know, obviously I, I think they're, they're really helpful, but it can tend to keep the understanding of what's going on inside of me in my head. And so the noble uh, art becomes right. the craft of working with this. Okay. So I say that the great work are all the kind of themes and symbols and energies and threads that are up here. And mm -hmm. then the noble art just drops them right into the cauldron. And oh, so. Boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I also see the great work as looking at, at sort of the, the big arc of the theme of the movement from, from dark to light and, and into dark, um, sort of the, the grand arc. Mm -hmm. Whereas what I realized with the noble art, what I wanted to do was, was go through that process cycle by cycle. So, so within each cycle, starting at Yule, um, we look at the movement from dark to light within that that section itself and then oh, gotcha gotcha right. okay so so what i realized at the heart and perhaps if we're looking at at a, a psycho spiritual approach that the great work perhaps might be a little bit more spiritual and the noble art is a little more psycho Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so digging down deep. It, the, so the, the, the great work is an opportunity to wrap your brain around processes, cycles, frameworks, and then the noble art is an opportunity to really spiral in there and perhaps yeah. do some of that deep work to get us to a place where we can embody the learnings. We can actually be integrating them into, yeah. into ourselves, into our lives. I talk a lot, and I, I talk about this in the introduction, that um, it, the noble art is really about looking about how to move from what I call from shadow, mm -hmm. shadow to empowerment mm -hmm. from empowerment to enlightenment mm -hmm. and then from enlightenment back down to engagement where we're embodied like the, that spirit is embodied so it's almost like you know we're in the the depth and the dark of the shadow and we come yeah. up into yeah. this, this level of consciousness and empowerment and then up to this this higher vibrational enlightenment then we go back down to engagement which seems almost like it's the same point is shadow but it's very different it feels totally different i really really love that and, and i'm really tempted i want to go on a whole sort of um psychotherapy tangent with you around um uh but we'll try not to go there too far but um the holy bagel theory i don't know if you're uh, very familiar with that but um oh maybe we'll get into this another time but just thinking um there's a um, you know, when we think about when we shut down and we really pull into ourselves and it's that shadow piece. Um, but it's, uh, it's been occurring to me how much that's just a, the flip side of being safe and, and pulled inward. And it seems right. this is what you're talking about. I'm not doing a very good job of describing what I'm thinking because I don't want to divert, but all I want to say is I'm very excited about that concept. I, I I feel that yeah that the noble art the whole thing it really is I, I talk about it, from shadow to essence through the wheel of the year it yeah. actually is about challenging how prevalent shame is in our lives mm -hmm. how mm -hmm. it shows up and how it keeps us um, locked locked in mm -hmm. um, so the other thing that I I I talk about this that there's um, you know, the movement of the noble art, we talk about, not we, I don't know what, who I'm, but there's, there's sort of general, <laughs> the, royal <we. laughs> the royal we talk about. <laughs> um, very of transformation, right? That, um, and, and a lot of what I really have been um, very interested in exploring is this relationship between 
transformation and transcendence mm. and and how they are very they're different approaches really trying to come to this the same end but they do it very very differently and it, it's very much like the tarot you know i see the hermit is is being about that transcendence like remove yourself from engagement with life so that you can listen to the voice of spirit and and um the death card is about transformation and the two of them are really talking about two different approaches to healing this this heaviness of of shame that that sits in in the shadow and and what i've i've been so what i was pre i have presenting sort of i guess the underpinning of the noble art is is that when we really work through this transformation transcendence dance when you're really looking at the hub of of alchemy like that you come to a place of transmutation and that transmutation is not transformation that transformation is almost like change from the outside in and transmutation is where you come to a place of of knowing so completely that you are the embodiment of spirit that that you you can't ever slide back down to that place of shame to the same degree ever again so that's the difference between transmutation and transformation right and right okay and so and what what i'm hearing is that with the noble art this is what you you've delved into and you're looking to support people who 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 read the book go on the journey in that transmutation process right really powerful wow yeah mm -hmm. i i would really love if people would find a way of not being so hard on themselves i mm -hmm. think there's a number of us who really feel that right mm -hmm. And, and I think what I felt is a nudge and, and hope, hopefully that, you know, that, that what, what I've presented in the noble art will, will feel like, as I said, not the tools, but, but the techniques of being able to work with the tools that can help come to that place. So, so what I've presented in the noble art, so I, I, have a chapter on this is what the shadow of this cycle looks like mm -hmm. and then i've got the chapter of this is what the light when when you've healed the shame this is what the light looks like in this particular cycle and then i present um a very in-depth guided visualization mm -hmm. to be able to experience what was talked about um, which for me is that transformation piece of like dropping into the experience. Mm -hmm. And then I've got a contemplation because I align it with the um, the seven hermetic principles mm -hmm. plus one. Um, so there's like a contemplation uh, from a chakra association. So again, being able to have more of that transcendence piece of the interplay of the, the shadow and the light and then i present a ritual where you can actually step into the space of bringing like the the sort of more mythic element and the the transcendent together and that's where the transmutation happens so i do that for, for each, each of the eight cycles oh wow that would just be an amazingly powerful opportunity to and so do you would your recommendation be that um this would be sort of a a process that would take a year or yeah. you'd sort of go through the year yeah yeah and it seems to me you there's a journal that's oh, right. there because that that just reminded me this engagement right. over a year what, yeah. what can you tell us about the journal so the journal has been like a little dream. Um, I, I think there's a lot of this, which I'm starting to realize that I'm talking about, which is a little self-serving, isn't it? Right. It's like I, this is a book that I would love to have had. <laughs> so, so you write the book and, and when it came to the journal, um, 
you know, as I said to my friend Esther, who's the designer of, of the journal, uh, the artwork in it, um, like every year as I'm coming up to December, I'm going through all of these journals because I'm looking for something that I can go through, like where am I making notes of the personal reflections and, right. you know, my daily, whether I'm doing the runes or the tea leaf reading, like where I can make my little notes on what what's the message of spirit is. And, and I'm very picky about how I want like the journal, like I need enough space that I can write. And it's also nice to have like a month where I can sort of, Anyways, so I was never that. finding exactly right. the thing. I've always shoehorning journals into right. what I think would work with the great work. And so um, with my friend Esther, who came out with this, she's got a beautiful um, uh, animal magic oracle. Um, I just love her art style. Um, so we designed one um together which is actually being printed right now and i am i'm very very excited about that um we will have it in we should have the copies um before the winter solstice so like this going through this whole grand cycle whether you're doing it with the great work or doing it with the noble art you actually literally could have a journal where you could make notes of Mm -hmm. and, and what we did with the um what we did with the journal was we worked with the imagery of the guided visualizations that are presented in the noble art so that you can actually see the landscape that you're moving through in the meditations that um in the journal oh wow yeah so it's like it's it's sort of ended up creating a whole landscape which is neat yeah. so tiffany there's a question here uh around the publisher of the books um and the journal so um and i guess the, the oracle, the but i think she must be referring to your friend's oracle um, right yeah so so the the books are, are llewellyn the great work and the noble art are both llewellyn um and the animal magic oracle is it's self-published so that's through um esther sanchez and um i don't know if there's i i think actually if you look up uh animal magic oracle.com that's what her website is so um and then we're also like self-publishing the journal mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well so yeah um i have a question um so do you see it as um if somebody is wanting to engage with your teachings through your books the great work and the noble art do you recommend like should should somebody do the great work for a year uh, before they do the, the noble art or can you do them at the same time or like what do you what do you recommend yeah you definitely can do them both at the same time. Like, I think it's helpful to, um, you know, to read the chapters in the great work, as I said, okay. to get the ingredients, like gotcha. that's just getting the lay of the land, the overview, mm -hmm. and then go into the noble art and read the same cycle. You know, so if you're looking at Yule, mm -hmm. um, the great work will give you all of those different aspects of working just with the energies of Yule. But then if you go into the noble art, working with that same section with Yule is talking about, you know, shame and loss of self and disconnection from essence, the, the lost, instead of the, the magical child, you know, the, the birth of the wonder child, um, it's how we become disconnected from that. So I actually talk about addiction as as a way in which we we try to numb the pain of the lost child mm -hmm. so starting to get a sense of what is it like to to reclaim that sense of of what my essence is and and what is what is meaningful to me in my life so mm -hmm. it's a very different way of working with this the same energies but it's um that's where you really are rolling up the sleeves and and getting the inner work done mm -hmm. So Tiffany, I heard you talk about stories 
being inspiring to you and, and motivating people's stories. And I also heard you talk about, um, you know, in a way manifesting things that you'd wish you'd had on, on your journey. <laughs> so manifesting them. Well, the journal, like you will be able to use it as well, but. Oh, um, I'm so excited. I can't wait to get my copy. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but then also offering it out to the world to, to, to others. Um, which I think are really beautiful, um, inspiring, um, yeah, just paths that, 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 or things that have motivated you. What would you say motivates you on a, on the day to day, um, you know, like getting down and actually sitting down and doing the work, which I know can be challenging with all the demands on, on our time and our, in our busy lives. But, um, so you, you've got these sort of, larger motivations are they the things that actually get you down and, and doing the work i i think they kind of they are mm -hmm. i i i think i get excited about things mm -hmm. and when i get excited about something that i want to share right that thing that i'm excited about mm -hmm. i have one sister not the sister who's here it's a different sister right um who <laughs> makes fun of me sometimes because whenever apparently I, I guess I do a little monkey shut. She's like, Tiffany's eyes going like, Ooh, 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 Ooh. ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like that. <laughs> you and, definitely are somebody who does get, um, I see you as always just, you know, embracing life and just looking to this kind of suck the marrow out of it. Right. Just mm. Mm -hmm. I I think there is an aspect of that, but I I've also I've I've recognized more actively. I think I don't know how this is is going to sound. I I don't necessarily mean it in any way, but I I have been kind of trying to get to the root of of my own you know essence and magical child and all of that. Mm -hmm. I I think I've recognized a a thread of of generosity, mm -hmm. you know, that I, I don't know how to just sort of keep things like, Oh, I found this thing and I love it. And I'm just going to work with it on my own. Like, it's almost like as soon as I find something, I'm like, Oh my gosh, I want to tell everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I definitely that just that let's, let's spread the joy. Let's spread the, the inspiration. Let's spread the insight. Um, yeah. Well, and, and go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, and I think that's the thing, what I'm really finding with, so, so I, this next book that I'm working on and I have, I've really been struggling with it. Um, I think partly because it's been hard to find the time to, to give it, I think that what, what it needs. And it's partly because there's something which I kind of stumbled upon, which I think, I think there's something in this, which is really powerful. And I don't know that, that it's necessarily been sort of talked about in this way. And I'm really interested in exploring it. And, and I would love to share it with people, like right? Like, it's mm -hmm. like, if it, if it is helpful to me or interests me, then I can't be the only one. So, mm -hmm. um, and so there have been times when I've thought like, why am I just let it go just let it go but it's almost like they're tugging at at me going no like <laughs> we want to tell our story too mm -hmm. you know and and so there is something in that which which becomes I think that that motivator that that so becomes there these the stories that you're hearing or these these insights they're almost that they're requesting to be heard through you. Yeah. yeah. I think, yes, I guess that sounds very grand. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think you just sound like, um, it's just, a, I think a, an awareness uh, at, a, at a really um, uh, interesting level, because I, uh, for me, I'd like to, I don't know if you can give a sense of what that feels like. Like, is it, you know, um, just um, like thoughts that occur to you or? 
I don't know if I'm expressing what I'm what I'm wondering, but yeah, and and I'm not I'm not sure in truth. I'm not sure if it's so much as thoughts or as it is sort of the patterns. Patterns, okay. Right? And and that's that's yeah. what happened with the great work is mm -hmm. that that and I, I write about that in the introduction that I was just noticing something that was happening mm -hmm. and then realized like, oh, I think there's kind of a bigger thing going on here. And, and if I'm seeing it, then for sure, other people must be noticing it as well, right. or, you know, it's applicable right. there. So, so let's kind of bring this out to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think the same with, with the noble art, I, I know, and anybody who spent any time with me, <laughs> I've been talking about this sort of lately. I, I know I talk about shame a lot and because I, and I, because it's epidemic, mm -hmm. like everybody has it, it, mm -hmm. it shackles us all in, in mm -hmm. some way. And, and I, and really a, a lot of what I've, I've found, I don't think that I've said anything that is that, that mind blowing in truth. I probably shouldn't be saying that in, in the book. Like it's, it's, it's not new information, mm -hmm. but I have been just shocked with sometimes when I'm saying this to clients, I'll go like, blah, blah, blah. Like mm -hmm. these are the layers. And they're like, I've never heard this before. Right. Um, I'm like, how, why are we not talking about this? How, mm -hmm. how is this, information that is is still surprising and so so it became again it's still the these same same patterns mm -hmm. it's like I, I just see ben um mentioned hey ben in the in the chat it, you know you've said it in a way that resonates with people mm -hmm. and that's what i was thinking as you were talking it's um you know you have your own lens your own frame your own way of communicating it that allow you know that will bring it to people who allow them to hear it where in other instances they they haven't for what whatever reason right? yeah and i i think in truth that it that goes back to that <laughs> Again, it's, I think it's very Joseph Campbelly, right? Mm. That whole quote again. I've got it in the great work that is like, you know, nature is your nature, and if you hold nature out there, if you mm -hmm. hold the story out there, if you hold the image out there, then you've misread it. You've misread the image. You have to pull it in and see it as being reflective of something inside of you in order for it to really, you know to land in the way that it's supposed to land. And, and so I think that's the thing, which if, you know, saying, saying it in a way that resonates with people, I think all I've done is, is sort of reflected is that, that when we see it out in nature, it is, it is metaphoric, but no different than what is going on inside of us. But for some reason, when we see it out in nature, we see it as like beautiful and part of the process. And when we see it inside of us, we wrong ourselves for that process. So again, I'm hearing echoes of the hermetic philosophy that you referenced earlier. And you talked about, um, I think it's the law of correspondences. It seems like that's that's tapping into that as yeah. above, so below. So below. And, and as heard within, that a few times in, in as our, within in so without as is within, the same as well so right yeah as within so without and so what i'm hearing you say now is that we might see something that we're awed by or inspired by out there and um we're not willing or able to see that that also that beauty that divinity or that inspiration is also with absolutely us. is that so it's kind of the other way around the what we are inspired by what we see what we're awed by is also in us absolutely absolutely wow. but we can also we can look at you know the leaves falling off the trees we can see the starkness right. of the trees in winter and and 
and see like there's there's a beauty and there's a simplicity mm-hmm. and there's a peace that comes from that mm-hmm. but in our own lives when we see that we've been sort of stripped of everything and it's down to the bare bones and then then in that instance we think what's wrong with me that oh i think i'm getting i think i'm understanding more what, right. what you're saying to me what that echoes of is um you talk a lot about shame and uh, in my work i talk a lot about self-compassion right the importance right. of that and how we so quickly are able to look at others with soft eyes and with context and with you know sort of understanding of you know we're people in context uh, who are just doing the best we can but we rarely shine that same light back right. on ourselves and it right. feels to me similar along the lines of what you're saying absolutely yeah, yeah. Wow, wonderful. So I heard you allude to another book that I think isn't the noble art. Is right. It, is, are you able to talk more about that at this point? Um, it's funny. Or- I'm not sure how much I, I am able to talk yeah. about that one other than what I realize, and this is why I was kind of pushing it away. It's, it's funny <laughs> no, how... <laughs> and then because again i'm like it's not making any sense to me this is this is not my work this is not what i do i don't understand how it fits in the context of of my my work and yet it it just kept being there and then i realized oh my gosh i realized that so this to me is rhiannon's book okay the next one so that there's arian Rhodes book is up okay. here mm-hmm. and then we drop into caridwin's book mm-hmm. which is the cauldron but the next book is really just about how to deal with that movement between the dark and the light what what happens in that space between in the movement from the one to the other huh so what what helps us what supports us gotcha speaking our need is this what we're like that that ability to to navigate yeah between mm-hmm. yeah I also, as you were talking, I mean, you see her on her on her horse, right? Navigating the landscape. Well, absolutely, Ams. You'll see you her. So jealous. I am. <laughs> well, because this is, I will say, if you want to look, talk about process. Yes. So one of the things that I do is is if there's if there's somebody who seems to be inspiring, me, then she sits beside me. So I know I know Jenna knows this one. This this is I love this one because. Can you see it? Okay, because again, I've I I've gotten the roboto happening. Yeah, where she, she's, she's lovely. Um, she's this beautiful um, pregnant mare on one side, but yeah. she's also the the skull on the other. Yeah, we can't quite see the skull definition, but you can yeah. see that there's two aspects to the to the to the horse. So that's that shadow and light, yeah. and All that together. We, we both are because that's the other thing too is the thing that I hear not uncommonly is you know I just I just want to be healed. I just want to get to a point where I don't feel this anymore. And I'm, I'm not sure that we ever get to that place. You mean there's no, there's no ticky box that we can just check <laughs> off and uh, move on to the other thing? Done, done. Yeah, there is. But, the you know, then, then we die, right? It's like, oh. yeah. <laughs> if, yeah. I'm, if I'm breathing, I'm learning. If I'm breathing, I'm learning. Yeah. Well, um, I'll know I'll be... Um, excited to see whatever comes down um the pike is that the actual word a pike anyway is it a pike or a pipe i don't know <laughs> i can hold it on a pike <laughs> <laughs> uh, whatever's coming up next <laughs> for you i'm sure it will all be interesting and inspiring and thought provoking and um a gift that spirit of generosity is just always shining through in um in what you're you're offering um and 
Oh, let's see. I lost my train of thought there a little bit. Is there, I know we're getting, you know, down to wrapping up here, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's been on your, um, on your mind that you also wanted to, to share that we haven't touched on with your, with your works and your offerings and your creativity? Mm -hmm. I think it, it's it's really just it it always comes back I think to that sense of of being able to celebrate the uniqueness of our own stories mm. and, and not to um, and not not to to wrong ourselves for the stories that are the hard stories. I think one of the things that we're seeing right now is, you know, we've, we've gone through a lot of challenges over the past year and a half. I think it's brought a lot of stuff to the surface. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, for those of you who know, we have posted on a, a seven planets in retrograde, yeah. but I mean, I don't think I'm not alone in, in the work, that I do in talking with my colleagues, like we are seeing an intensification mm -hmm. of challenge. Mm -hmm. There's a, a lot of trauma that just feels like it's coming to the surface. It's being spoken of yeah. in ways that it hasn't and seeing people struggling a lot. There's a lot of feelings that are coming up. And, and so it's being able to, to honor the, the truth of that, and the truth of those experiences but as you're talking about with the self-compassion mm -hmm. you know how can we start to bring some of the the gentleness of of light to be able to to hold ourselves moving through that mm -hmm. because i i really do feel that it's we are not going to move through the dark by 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 not turning around and facing it we're not going to move through the dark by not turning around and facing it. Right. right. So when we don't face it, we won't move through. Right. We're going to be mm -hmm. stuck there. Right. So how to have, I think, both the courage and, um, and as you say, the compassion mm -hmm. um, and, and, and to recognize that, you know, as I often say too, we are, we are, we are not defined by the things that happen to us. But, but we do express ourselves through the ways in which we, we respond to those things. So, you know, telling our stories, celebrating our stories, even if they're, they're hard stories to tell, mm -hmm. I think it's just so very powerful. Coming back to the bards and the books and the Oh, ballads. nice uh, <laughs> circling around. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, Tiffany, you do just offer such um, insightful and creative and compelling tools to, to, nav to do that navigation uh, through the dark. And um, so I know that I am very excited to continue, you know, the work that you know, begun here in the great work and to dive down into the cauldron with you into the, the noble art and, um, and whatever else may uh, emerge as, as we go. Um, mm -hmm. So how can people uh, get their hands on a copy of either and or the great work and the noble art? And here, oh, you hold that one up. I'll hold this one up. Okay, look, oh, I'm bad with my directions. There, there we go. Oh, yes, too beautiful. Oh, I'm oh, terrible at getting it in the middle there. There we go. That's great. Oh, perfect. So how can um, we get them? So I know on Llewellyn, because um, again, I think it depends on where, where people are. Sure. Um, but it's it's on you know all the usual haunts. Sure. Your your right. Llewellyn, your Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble, your chapters, your you know he who shall not be named. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you for those of us who are near you in in Kitchener, you are I have it at, yeah. So I have it at the Hive. Mm -hmm. um, if you are are in Kitchener, I I am. Um, like a social distance um sort of limited i've got like time slots between 12 and 4. um i've actually set up this whole thing in the living room living room the living room of the hive it's become my home 
um, that Ben helped me with. And uh, I'm so excited. And uh, I've been I've been spending all my free time um, during the week making little presents for people who are coming to the launch. So be very exciting. I'm, yeah. I'm very much looking forward to it. Yeah. So and I think Ben put in the chat um, mm -hmm. the um, the website of hiveandgrove.com. And actually on that, you, you can also order through me, the great work, the noble art. Um, and there's also a link to pre-order the journal. Okay. Um, and also something which I didn't even talk about was um, because there's a whole way of working with this, which is an energy healing thing, which I haven't talked about, um, which is also, you know, quite, I think expansive and, and powerful. Um, but also I've got like a special singing bowl, which is just was created right. in alignment with the books. And so that's also on the website. Beautiful. There's a question here from Aaron, if the launch will be streamed anywhere. Are you um, I no, I, I'm not, I wasn't planning to stream mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, just cause I thought it was going to be more of a personal sort of one-on-one sure. -on -one as, as people are, are coming. So this is actually sort of officially the launch. Woo like, I wish I had that celebration thing like we do on Zoom, but uh, we've got the oh, little that's right. We could have little hats on and stuff. <laughs> well, so many congratulations to you then with the, the launch of, of the Noble Thank Art. You. Just I'm, um, I'm excited to have it out in the world. I yeah. Excited. And we're really thrilled that you were um, you know, you were able to come and spend time with us here on the, the, the SOA page and with our, our core call gathering here and um, just wishing you all the best with uh, oh, this you, and with all your forthcoming um, offerings. We'll, we'll all be just really excited to, to learn you. from and, and grow with. So with that, I think our time is coming to an end this Friday evening. Oh, there's my, <laughs> my <laughs> nine o'clock alarm went off. No, that's just your party music. That's right. <laughs> and, and so I um, want to thank everybody who came and, and to our, our, our party this evening. Mm -hmm. And um, it so was really fun. delightful to spend time. And um, I wish you all a, a wonderful rest of the evening and a wonderful weekend and um i know we have many more coracle live events coming up but i have not um done my due diligence of having a list in front of me so i know that it's all on the soa page here and also there is a, a coracle group so um feel free to um to join that and and get the list of all the upcoming events, including including a women in druidry conference coming up at the I end, of, saw that, yeah. end of November. So you want to check that out for sure. Yeah. So again, on behalf of the Sisterhood of Avalon and our Coracle programming, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, have a, a wonderful evening, and we will be back again soon. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Thank you, Sydney. That was so fun. That was fun. <laughs> Absolutely. We could just come and chat every Friday night. <laughs> totally. <laughs> There's so many more things I want to want to talk to you about. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, and good night. Good night.